So for today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can create the motion tile transition in Vegas Pro 11. Now you do need uh, either Vegas Pro 8, 9, 10, or 11, but if you have Movie Studio Platinum then you can't use this because we're going to be using a few tools uh, which aren't included in any other versions of Vegas. So first off, you want to have your two clips ready on the timeline. Now, as you noticed in the video example, uh, when I zooms out, I have a couple of repeating clips all around my original footage, and then towards the middle of the transition, the two middle uh, video clips are overlapping each other and they're cross fading so that they mix in. And then when I zoom back in, it goes on to a different clip. So to create that cross fade, we're just going to uh, overlap these two video clips. So now we have two video clips that are mixed into each other and the motion tile transition is around two to three seconds so uh, before one second before the crossfade actually occurs you want to go ahead and set a marker so click on our timeline and press M on your keyboard to set a marker and then about two seconds later we're gonna set another marker and these markers will indicate when our transition starts and then when our transition will end alright so as you notice in the video example again uh, we have this footage and we have duplicates or copies of the footage all around the uh, middle footage and just for this tutorial we're going to be using only nine pieces of footage uh, of course you can go uh, beyond nine if you want to zoom out more but that's going to take a lot more video tracks and a lot more time but to keep it simple we're going to be using nine only for this tutorial so again including this one we're going to be creating uh, nine video tracks you want to right click insert video track and keep creating video tracks until you have eight, eight empty video tracks one more and we're gonna go ahead and first uh, go to our first video clip and press U to separate the audio from the video uh, so that when we're duplicating this footage the audio isn't copied as well so get the track video track containing the two video clips and bring it above all of the empty video tracks and next we're going to uh, go to our first marker and we're going to make a cut so on the keyboard while uh, just press on the video clip and press S on your keyboard to cut it and we're gonna get this little piece of footage we just cut and we're gonna hold control or CTRL on our keyboard and click it and drag it down and that will make copy of the cut we just made alright and next we're going to rearrange our video clips so that you have multiple copies showing up on the screen so on the video track containing the two video clips what we want to do is go to our track motion this little icon right here called track motion click it and you should get a window similar to this one now with the scene cursor selected you want to go ahead and select your first marker on this timeline that will bring your cursor on this timeline as well you want to go ahead and set a keyframe okay and you want to go one frame back and set a new keyframe as well. So we're going to go ahead and go to the second keyframe and we're going to go ahead and change the width and the height of our video. Now we're going to bring up our calculator and we're going to be doing a little math. So uh, just for this video example, since we're doing the motion tile effect, we're having nine multiple copies 
uh, the video clip. So if it's basically a, a square or a rectangle, it's 3 by 3. So you want to go ahead and get the width value of our resolution, which is 1280. So 1280, and since we're having 3 by 3, uh, we can go ahead and divide this by 3, and you should get a value of 426. So on your width, go ahead and change it to 426, and now we have a video clip in the middle of the screen. Now all we have to do next is go to our uh, co multiple copies of our video clip and make them the same size and arrange them all around this uh, video clip. So for this one as well, uh, you want to go ahead and go to the first marker and create a keyframe. But you don't. This time you don't have to uh, make another keyframe one frame before because uh, this isn't the actual uh, original video track. All right, and then change the width to 426, and you can arrange them in any order you want. Just make sure that uh, they're accurate and there's no uh, black spots anywhere. All right, so for the second video track, we can go ahead and change the Y value so it goes either up or down. Set the Y value to 100, 240. It's a little too high. 235, 240. All right, and we have these two video clips adjacent to each other and do the same thing as well for the uh, other video tracks so for now I'm just gonna speed up my tutorial because all I'm doing is rearranging the video clips so it should be self-explanatory for now Alright, so I finished rearranging and resizing the uh, multiple copies of the original video clip. And so on the preview, now, now we have uh, nine video clips in total. So three by three and three by three. Now, next, we're going to get all the uh, video tracks that are copies of the original video clip and make them compositing childs of our original video track. So to do that, all we need to do is select our original video track and on the bottom tracks, which are the duplicated videos, we're going to select Make Compositing Child. So after you select that, as you can see here, the video track of the uh, copy of the video is now a child of the first and original video track. So you want to do that for basically every single video track. And once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and go into the track motion, except this time we're not going to go uh we're not going to go into uh this track motion right here. We're going to go ahead and go into the parent motion. And the only difference is is that the parent motion will control the values for the rest of the uh, child compositing video tracks as well if we alter any changes uh, to the original video track. So you want to go ahead and make sure sync cursor is selected and go ahead and go to your first marker make a keyframe and then zoom in and then go back one frame and make a new keyframe as well and we're going to go into our second keyframe 
and if you select any of the four vertices of this little square and you click it and drag it outwards you're going to notice you can change the viewpoints of multiple video clips at once and for now on the first marker uh, we would want to increase the size of this so that for now it's only one video clip showing and after we have that done we're going to go ahead and uh, go to the middle between the two markers so for me that would be at 9 seconds since the second marker is at 10 seconds in so at 9 seconds we're going to go ahead and make a keyframe and we're going to get this little box and decrease the size of the box but you want to make sure that uh, when you're zooming in on this box you want to make sure that on the previous screen you're not seeing any black lines around the uh, multiple video clips so you don't want to uh, zoom in all the way and next after you've done that you want to go ahead and select the second marker on this uh, on the main timeline and on this track parent track motion window we're going to create a new keyframe and select the box and we're going to go ahead and go to our uh, second keyframe and we're going to copy the value of the width so which is 2178.57 memorize that value and now it should be at its original size at the end of the transition so let's preview the transition So again, it's zooming out, and you have multiple video clips uh, displaying on one screen at once, and you zoom back in, and as you see, as you can see, the middle video clip video clip is uh, crossfading the second video clip, and then zooms back in. But as you notice, right when I zoom in, I'm gonna have these black lines across the video so what I'm gonna do is get the bottom all the bottom copies of my first video clip and extend them all the way until the second marker so when I preview it zoom out crossfading and it goes to the second video clip So that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, again, I'm, I apologize for the really long tutorial. I try to keep this video as short as possible. So if you have any problems or questions with any step of this video, uh, just you can ask me in the comments and I'll reply to them. Uh, if you have any other video suggestions, uh, just send me them in a message or again, comments on this video. Uh, so I hope you guys like this video tutorial If it did help you please like the video comment on it and share it with your friends and Again, I'll see you guys next time